Welcome back, friends. It is time for Week 14 Game Picks in the National Football League. We kick things off with a Thursday, December 10th game at 8.20 p.m. Eastern Time, a rematch of Super Bowl 53 between the New England Patriots at 6 and 6 and the Los Angeles Rams at 8 and 4. So the Rams looking to extend their first place lead in the NFC West after the Giants helped knock off the Seahawks to give the Rams sole possession of first place in the division. I believe it's sole possession. Let me do a quick little look-sees. Uh, just so I don't sound like a complete idiot. I'm going to because I cannot find what I'm looking for. No, so they are tied for first place right now. But I believe they're the ones in the, uh, the three seed while Seattle is in the five seed. And the Patriots are on the outside looking in for the first time this late in the season since uh, 2000. So this game is going to be very interesting. Uh, it's it's going to really determine how far both of these teams can go uh, during the remainder of the season. If the Rams win, they have a very good chance of of playing a worse team in the first round because of their higher seed. And if the Patriots lose this game, they're going to be on the outside looking in with a very, very tough schedule. They are pretty much going to have to win out in order to make the playoffs at this point. So this is really a must-win game for Cam and the Patriots. But, excuse me, I'm going to take the Rams. I think they are the better overall unit. Uh, now that I'm saying this, it's I'm going to be proven wrong. That's just how it goes. That's the fact of the matter. But the Rams are going to be my pick to win this game on Thursday night. Then we progress to Sunday, December 13th at 1 p.m. The New York Giants at 5 and 7 take on the Arizona Cardinals at 6 and 6. So Arizona has lost four of their last five. They started the season 5 and 2. And the Giants have won four straight games for the first time since 2016. So both of these teams heading in opposite directions after starting Polar opposites could not have started any more different than one another. Arizona, they started the season hot, looking like the best team in the National Football Conference. And then the Giants came out and they just kept losing close games and losing close games. And and then all of a sudden, you know, the Giants pick up a win against uh, against Washington. They, they drop a couple. They win against Washington again. And, you know, they have looked sound defensively and offensively they're doing enough and that's the the makings of a great team Arizona they just haven't been able to get any sort of offensive uh, production out of their squad like when you look at their game last week Kyler Murray he just did not look like that same quarterback that we saw in the beginning of the season so it, it, I, this matchup to me is is more of a toss-up than it was five weeks ago because uh, five weeks ago, you would have said the Cardinals were going to run away with this game. But after what the Giants did to Seattle, uh, that defense looks really, really good. But they have a very, very tough matchup. They have DeAndre Hopkins, Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, Kyler Murray. They've got a lot, and I mean a lot of weapons to deal with. And I know I haven't been picking the Giants lately. And they're on this four-game win streak, and I don't want to jinx them. This is the worst position to be in. Um, but I feel like I'm exempt. When I'm when I'm in the, the game pick zone, I feel like I'm exempt from jinxing because, you know, I'm picking based on who I think is going to win to help my, my overall yearly total. So I'm going to pick the Giants in this game to get to 6 and 7, clawing towards 500. Giants need this win to stay afloat. Uh, to stay atop, rather, the NFC East. Uh, Washington breathing down the Giants' neck after their impressive win over the 11-0 Steelers. So the Giants and Washington both getting some very impressive wins uh, last Sunday. Or Sunday and Monday, rather. So New York, they need to win this game to stay, to stay ahead of Washington. They have the tiebreaker. If Washington and New York stay, you know, stay the current course and finish with the same record, the Giants get in because they have the sweep over Washington. So that's that's very important to note as we wind down on the final three weeks of the regular season. So I'm picking New York in this game 
to beat the Arizona Cardinals. Then at 1 p.m., the 11-1 Kansas City Chiefs take on the 8-4 Miami Dolphins. Kansas City has won nine straight road games. That is the longest active streak in the NFL. And Miami, their offense has not been able to generate a lot of production under Tua Tagovailoa since his first couple of games that he started. So this game, I'm going to pick the Chiefs in. They're just an overwhelming unit. It's really, really, really difficult to match up with what they have to offer on defense or to offer on offense. And the defense isn't isn't a slouch either. I mean, it's not the worst unit in the league. They're pretty middle of the road. And they're good enough to get stops when they need to, and they're facing a rookie quarterback. So I'm, I'm going to pick the Chiefs in this game as much as I want the Dolphins to win. Uh, I'm going to use my, my head and pick the smart bet, and that's uh, Kansas City. Then the 4-8 Broncos will take on the 4-8 Panthers. Denver, all time, is 5-1 and one against Carolina, including the playoffs, including Super Bowl 50. Uh, I'm going to pick the Broncos again. Uh, Drew Locke had himself a nice game last week. Uh, they look like they're headed in the right direction now that they finally have their quarterbacks back. Quarterbacks plural. They don't have to start a wide receiver at quarterback this week. So, um, going to be a good game. Uh, can't, uh, Christian McCaffrey rather won't play uh, in this game. I believe he's out with a hamstring, I want to say. So, he's been banged up this season. It's just one after another after another for McCaffrey. Uh, which is unfortunate. You never like to see players go down. So hopefully he can recover soon. And uh, it's good. that's going to mean a lot to this to this Panthers team. So I'm going to pick Denver. Then the 3-9 and nine Cowboys take on the 2-9-1 and one Cincinnati Bengals. The Dallas Cowboys have allowed 32.8 points per game this season. That is the most in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. And they have a matchup nightmare on the outside they get T Higgins they get uh, uh, AJ Green and their cornerbacks have not been able to cover anything all year long it just depends on the quarterback play in Cincinnati uh, Andy Dalton looked good for a couple of weeks and then he looked very bad on Thanksgiving and then on on uh, Monday night so what did they play on Monday or did they play on Tuesday I don't remember anymore now there's games on every damn day of the week so uh, Andy Dalton has had a very up and down season filling in for the injured Dak Prescott. Uh, they're going to need to get C.D. Lamb involved. They're going to need to get Amari Cooper involved. And they're going to need to get Ezekiel Elliott going on the ground. And frankly, Ezekiel Elliott has been stymied. And that's just an undeniable fact. Tony Pollard has looked immeasurably better than Ezekiel Elliott has. So... I mean, the smart money here is going to say the Cowboys, but because I need them to lose as many games as humanly possible uh, for the Giants to win the NFC East, I'm going to pick the Cincinnati Bengals. Then the 8-4 and four Titans take on the 1-11 and 11 Jags. Jags nearly pulled off the upset of the decade, it feels like, last week against the Vikings, but, I mean, Vikings going to Vikings, of course. Kirk Cousins is um, one of the most overrated players in the entire NFL, so... As much as I want to pick the Jags in this rivalry game, I'm going to pick the Tennessee Titans to get to 9-4 and four and to start cementing their place uh, as a playoff team in the AFC. Then the 4-8 and eight Texans take on the 5-7 and seven Bears, the Houston Texans in franchise history. In the 20 years, or excuse me, in the 18 years that they've been a franchise, have never lost to the Chicago Bears. That is <laughs> incredible to me. Uh... And the Texans should be 5-7 and seven right now. Deshaun Watson, uh, he got robbed of an interception on Thanksgiving. And he got robbed of an interception on Thanksgiving. Um, th there was a, a couple of really tough calls against the Colts. And, and yeah, he, he won the game on Thanksgiving in, in handed fashion. But still, it's, it bothers me because he's my, he's my, my second favorite non-New York Giant in the entire NFL. So... It, it really really sucks to see that uh, his interception streak was broken on, on, a, on a garbage call. And, and then the fumble last week was just tough. Uh, center quarterback exchange got to be better. So Houston is the better team. That's just as, as plain as it gets. 
like you start from the quarterback position, you work your way down. Houston is the better team. They're going to win this game. They are my pick. Then the 6 and 6 Vikings take on the 7 and 5 Buccaneers. Tampa Bay has only allowed 74.2 rush yards per game this season. That's fewest in the NFL and Dalvin Cook is one of the league leaders in rushing yards. Given the Vikings are facing a fellow league leader in rushing yards in Ronald Jones, this game is going to be very interesting. Uh, it's going to be a battle of who can establish the ground game. And just based on how dominant the Buccaneers' running uh, rushing defense has been, it looks like it's going to be Tampa Bay. Uh, Tom Brady has not played good football this season. That's just... I mean, yeah, he, he, he's one of the league leaders in passing yards, but passing yards don't mean a whole lot of squat when you're playing the way that he has played, throwing the ball downfield. He has not looked like Tom Brady. And, yeah, I mean, he's 43 years old, so that's expected. But if you're leading this all-star squad, you got to play better for your team because they're 7-5, and five and they should have 10 wins right now. They're a team that talented. So, it's really tough. I, 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 If I was a Buccaneers fan, I would be pissed. Because this team should not be 7-5. and five. They should be one of the top teams in the NFC. And they, they should frankly be the number one or number two seed. And they're going to have to play in wildcard weekend if they make the playoffs. And now it's an if. It's an if Tom Brady makes the playoffs. That is just, it's it's unheard of. If, if Tom Brady isn't hurt, he's in the playoffs. And and now we, we might not even see him. So Vikings have a, a tough task ahead of them. But I, I have to pick Tampa Bay because they need this win. They really do. With how dominant the Saints are in the NFC and how things are tightening up in the NFC, a loss here, dropping them to 7-6, seven and, uh, seven and six, opens the door for a lot of teams like Washington to get into a wild card spot that they otherwise would not be able to occupy. So the NFC is getting blown wide open and the Buccaneers need to be very, very careful because if they lose another game, it opens the, the floodgates for them to be kicked straight out of the playoff. So I'm going to pick Tampa Bay. Then at 4.05, the 0-12 Jets take on the 8-4 Seahawks. The Seahawks are the only team with 20-plus sacks since Week 9. They couldn't get to Colt McCoy that often last week. Uh, offensively, Russell Wilson threw for over 200 yards, but he looked off the mark. He was hit and hammered all day long. Jets need to be creative with what they do on defense. They lost their their one of their worst coaches after uh, Greg Williams was fired for calling a cover zero blitz uh, against a, a Hail Mary um, and having single coverage rookie on Henry Ruggs last week. That was stupid. So the Jets, obviously, they have a tall task ahead of them. The Seahawks, when they're on, they're on. And when Russell Wilson plays at that MVP level, he is the best quarterback in football. When he's playing the way he played the first four or five weeks of the season, that is the best quarterback in football, bar none. And the Seahawks that I saw against the New York Giants can't beat this C this Jets team. If you're only going out there and scoring 12 points in a game, you're not going to win. Especially when the Jets scored, I believe the Jets in their own game scored more than the Seahawks and Giants did combined last week. So... I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying anything's possible. I will pick the Seahawks to win this game because just like I mentioned for Tampa Bay, a loss here can can open up a lot of things. And if the Seahawks drop to 8-8, eight and eight, if they finish the season 8-8, eight and eight, that means that they have given a lot of teams some good chances to lap them. If, Se if Seattle finishes 8-8 eight and eight and Washington, for example, finishes 9-7, and seven, you know what that means. So, Seahawks need a win in a bad way. I'm going to pick them. Then the Colts at 8-4 and four will take on the Raiders at 7-5. and five. Vegas has scored 30 points in four of their last five. I expect that to continue. Every week I say the Colts, they haven't shown me anything. And, I mean, genuinely they still have it. They have a lot of, of areas of their team that still are, are, are raise a lot of suspicion for me. 
uh, particularly with Phillip Rivers because he's not a big game quarterback. He can't win in the playoffs. So if they get there, it's it's going to be really tough for them to win any games, especially with how loaded the AFC is. They might have to go up against a Pittsburgh uh, or, or Kansas City, depending on who gets the number one seed now that they're tied uh, for number one and number two, technically, respectively, going down to tiebreakers. You know what I mean? So the Colts are going to have a tough time with whoever they end up playing in the in the playoffs. Uh, it, they're probably going to win their division now that they've beaten. Oh, excuse me. No, they play in, in the division with the Titans, so there's still a lot of still a lot of competition there in the AFC South. But the Raiders, they need this win in a bad way if they want to make the playoffs. Seven and nine ain't gonna cut it. So they need to get at least one. Two would be great. Ten would be prefer or three would be tap preferable. Excuse me, uh, to cement them as a playoff team. So I'm gonna give it to Vegas. I'm going to give them the win in this game. Then there's the 10-2 Saints versus the 3-8-1 Eagles. Jalen Hurts making his first NFL start. Going up against Taysom Hill. So Taysom Hill versus Jalen Hurts. Imagine that. Uh, I'm going to pick the Saints. They are the better football team. And the Eagles, frankly, are bad. Very, very bad. From owner to GM to head coach to starting kicker. They're bad. Yes, Jake Elliott is bad. So, I'm picking the Saints. Then the Green Bay Packers at 9-3 and three take on the Detroit Lions at 5-7. and seven. Green Bay is scoring 37 points per game versus the NFC North this season. If they get to at least 37, I won't be surprised in this game. Uh, Detroit is a, a bottom-feeding 5-7 and seven right now, uh, if that's even possible. They're definitely worse than the New York Giants. They're definitely worse than the Washington football team. So, and I think they're worse than the, the San Francisco 49ers. So, they're 5-7. and seven. They're not making the playoffs. Green Bay is going to beat them right into a 5-8 and eight record. So, uh, I'm picking Aaron Rodgers in the pack. Then, at 425, I've mentioned them a couple times in this uh, video. The Washington football team at 5-7 and seven gets the San Francisco 49ers at 5-7. and seven. San Francisco has allowed 326.3 total yards per game this season. That's sixth fewest in the NFL. And they need to limit Alex Smith, uh, his arm. And Washington, uh, we, we've seen it in almost every game that they've played, that they've won. Uh, they will start very slow. And they need to have a big, big time open to this game. They need to score on, on consecutive possessions to open the game. Uh, to, to really to really be able to grab a hold of this game by the throat and not let it go. Because if you remember, for a lot of the, the Pittsburgh game, they were trailing. I believe it was 14 to nothing. It was the biggest blown lead in the history of the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, at home. So the 49ers have a, have a, have a tough task ahead of them uh, for two 5-7 and seven teams. So... I think that the Niners are perfectly capable of winning this game. They, of course, have to play it at quote-unquote home uh, down in Arizona. So I'm going to pick San Francisco. I like Nick Mullins. I like the fact that he knows his team. He is a veteran quarterback in a system that really favors his talents. Uh, he has proven that he can win with this team. They destroyed the Giants in, in Week 2. So if that doesn't tell you anything then I don't know what will and the Giants swept the football team so I mean there you go 49ers beat Giants Giants beat 49ers oh what yeah 49ers beat Giants Giants beat football team 49ers beat football team there you go so I'm picking San Francisco then the Atlanta Falcons at 4 and 8 will take on the LA Chargers at 3 and 9 Matt Ryan and Justin Herbert both rank top 10 in passing yards per game this season I'm gonna give it to Justin Herbert and the Chargers I pick them a lot I like them. They're like my new Browns. If everybody who's followed this uh, this series since its inception in 2016 knows that I I picked the Browns a lot, <laughs> or I did anyway when they were going 0-17 or 0-16. I, I picked them a lot that season. So I'm gonna go with the Chargers to upset the Falcons, even though they're four and eight and three and nine. So there you have it. I'm picking Herbert. 
Then Sunday night football will be the Pittsburgh Steelers at 11 and 1 in the Buffalo Bills at 9 and 3. Pittsburgh has allowed 17.6 points per game this season. That's fewest in the NFL. And clearly, you can hold teams to 17.6 points per game and still lose to the Washington football team. So congratulations, Pittsburgh. You've let the 72 Dolphins pop another bottle of champagne. You are the worst 11-1 team of all time. I think, I think, I said last week, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington won. I do vaguely remember saying that. So I think I was on the right track. I knew in my head that it was perfectly possible. Because I, 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 I follow the division that my team plays in. So I know what Washington is capable of, and I know what Alex Smith is capable of. I've known what he's capable, uh, been capable of since 2006, or 2005 when he was drafted. Uh, he's a very good quarterback, and a, and a game manager that can go above being a game manager when applicable, when needed to be. And he did that last week. He managed a lot of that game. He didn't play great, but he played well a damn enough to win that game. And... Steelers, oh yeah, yeah, no, no wins on their record, on their 11-1 record are good wins, I mean every win is a win is a win, you know the saying, but now they've opened the door for Kansas City to steal the number one seed, like when you have your own fate in your hands and you blow it like that, that's horrible, Buffalo's gonna win this game, uh, in my humble estimation, I just I like the Bills. I like the ability of Josh Allen. I'll always take a a, a strong arm quarterback with some with some good legs over uh, an aging veteran with a bunch of TikTok dancers for wide receivers. So I'm going to take Buffalo. Then on Monday night at 8:15, the Baltimore Ravens at seven and five take on the nine and three Browns. The two top rushing offenses in the National Football League. Ravens, they need to win this game. Because right now they're sitting at third in the AFC North. Third. They were the only playoff team in that division last year. And now the Steelers, they already locked in their ticket. Well, they haven't officially, but you know what I mean. They're, they're going to the playoffs. They're not going to miss it with 11 wins. Uh... Cleveland at 9 and 3 is a game away from pretty much clinching their spot as one of the wild card teams. And and Baltimore's on the outside looking in. The AFC North is going to have to send three teams to the playoffs for Baltimore to be in the playoffs. I think a lot of Ravens fans are missing that point. Like when they look at their division you think oh Cleveland, Cleveland's Cleveland. Pittsburgh, yeah, you know, they'll always have above 8 or 8. And then you've got, uh, I don't even know who the third team, that, the Cincinnati, who's been garbage forever. And if you're Cleveland, or if you're uh, Baltimore, you're sitting here, you have seven wins, you're seven and five. You're the second or first best rushing offense in the league. You have Lamar Jackson. And you're not currently in the playoffs. Season ends today, Baltimore's not in it. They need to win this game. They need to win this game. They need to win out. And they need to hope that some of the, the other middle-of-the-road teams in the AFC have a bad last three weeks to give them any shot to get in right now. So, I'm picking Cleveland. Yep. Baltimore smacked them around the first time they played. I believe that was in week one. Now I'm going to have to cross-reference myself. Yes, so in week one, Baltimore won 38-6. 30, so I don't expect that to happen again. Um, I'm picking Cleveland in this game. And that'll do it for week 14. So thank you all so much for tuning in. This has been one of the longer videos. I've actually had time and ambition to sit down and record. So maybe that's a sign of things to come. Or maybe I'm just trying to kill time while Cyberpunk 2077 downloads. We'll find out. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I will catch each and every one of you guys next week.